If you're a tech founder or you sell high tech software and you're finding that your pitches to the media or to investors or to clients is not really working or it's just not landing or you're not getting those people coming up to you afterwards that you really want, there might be a reason for that. So if, for example, it could be that the, the tech jargon is too heavy for the audience and they're not really understanding the benefits of it. Or it could be that you're focusing on a really specific area of your software solution um, and the people can't see the bigger picture in which the software you know, plays a role. Or it could be they just don't understand what you're saying. So I want to talk to you today about a technique that you can use in your pitches that will hopefully alleviate all that and have these people coming up to you afterwards and saying, I want to know more. And I call those people the come ups. You know, the people who come up to you afterwards because that's exactly what you want. And even if they don't come up to you afterwards, the least you want is for people to take their heads out of their phones or their laptops and look at you as you're presenting because it demonstrates that they're interested in what you're saying. So you might be asking, well, how do I know this technique that I'm about to share with you uh, is, to, is true? You know, how do I know that it works? Well, I've been a judge on a number of panels for a number of years and I've read literally hundreds of applications and seen hundreds of pictures. Secondly, um, I've worked in advertising and marketing and worked with companies like Apple and BHP and Colgate and I've seen good pictures, you know, and I've seen what works and I've seen what doesn't. I've seen multi-million dollar um, accounts are landed with a great pitch. And more importantly, I think, is I'm actually the founder of a tech company and I've been pitching for the last year in literally hundreds and hundreds of meetings and I've seen what's working and I've seen what hasn't worked. So um, what I want to do is share with you that technique and me being a non-tech founder, you know, there's some advantages to that. Uh, one is that I bring marketing and advertising to what I'm doing so I can sort of see it from a different angle. And because I don't have a strong tech vocabulary, I've had to really understand that I understand that I, I know what I'm talking about before I speak. The negatives of that is that I got a little bit sort of caught up with the tech jargon in the very beginning. And I was seeing other tech founders pitch and I thought I should do it that way because that's what everyone's doing. And after I'm doing it for a while and realizing it's not really working, I really had to think this needs to change. So maybe I need to bring what I've been doing for 30 years and apply it to my tech founder role so that I can start to connect with the audience. So I want to talk to you about the structure that I use to create all my pictures and all my presentations. And you can use this to sell software. You can use it to sell anything. It can be a one minute pitch three minutes, three hours, it really doesn't matter because you can expand or condense it as needed. But all you really need to know is the structure. So I wanna demonstrate um, a little example using a very simple product so you can understand what I'm talking about when I talk about the features versus the benefits and how tech people often focus on the tech at the expense of really talking about the, uh, the benefits. So take the well-known company Afterpay. Now, you know what they do, they're buy now, pay later. And Nick Molnar is the founder of that company. Now, I just don't know this to be true, but I can imagine Nick would have the option to go to these retailers, you know, at Westfields or little, you know, bikini stores or shoe shops, and talk to the owner and say, look, I've got this uh, amazing software and uh, it uses ML and AI and uh, algorithms and linear regression. And what we do is we split the payments into four equal payments and we liaise with your banks on the platform and the, know your own identity. And what we do is enable the uh, payments to be provided uh, in advance to these people so that you don't take any risk and the buyer gets to take the product before they pay for it. You know, you can imagine Natasha who runs the shop going, yeah, thanks, but I actually have to serve a customer right now. So, the other way he could have done it and probably did considering how successful they've been is to go in and say, Natasha, I've got a software product that can make more of your customers buy more, more quickly. And how they do it is that we take all the risk. They take the product, they walk out with it without even paying for it. And we make sure you get paid every single time. Is that of interest to you? So again, I don't know if Nick did that, but you know, this is the principle that we focus on the benefit and you tell you know, a little bit of a story. So I want to amplify the difficulty now of storytelling and I want to use an AI and artificial intelligence and machine learning software product such as my own so I can demonstrate for you what I used to do 
and why it wasn't working and then demonstrate what I now do and why it's working. So take, for example, um, uh, you know, what we used to do and we'd go into, you know, an engineer or an asset manager and, and say, um, you know, we help engineers like you use machine learning. We make it affordable and accessible and we use uh, TensorFlow, linear regression um, and Unity game engine so that you can check your pumps more often so they don't break down so quickly. It's okay. But the guy's going, oh, I think it's lunchtime. <laughs> so, and not even... That might be interesting for the asset manager, but often you're presented to the C-suite, you know, the CEOs and the CFO and the CIO and the CMO and other Cs, and um, they're not that interested. So you've got to work out, well, how can we make it interesting for those people who initially need to improve, you know, the concept, and then it gets down to the engineers and the uh, other people in the organisation. So we changed up the story, and I'll just tell you how it worked. And I'll tell you the story that we were using and at our pictures. So it goes something like, we work with people like Paul. Now, Paul is an asset manager at, say, the Royal Children's Hospital. And Paul's job is to maintain the pumps. And there's about 30 of these pumps in the bowels of the building, and they're about the size of an oil drum. Now, the problem is, for Paul, if this pump shuts down, it shuts the power off at the operating theatres five levels up. And with a young, sick child being operated on, that's pretty, pretty dangerous. So the other problem that Paul faces, a bigger problem, is that he's only got sometimes five to ten minutes notice that the pump is about to shut down. So his team have to scramble to fix this issue. And it's very stressful knowing that any moment now those operating theatres could shut down the power. So... What we do is we have a piece of software that enables you, Paul, to predict and know in advance when these pumps are about to shut down and not just five minutes, but five days so that you can see and fix those pumps very, very quickly using you know, scheduled maintenance so that it's not a stressful situation so you can all live happily without worrying about whether these pumps are gonna shut down the operating theater. So if you're interested, uh, what we'd like to do is set up a meeting and we can show you how the software works and show you how we've been doing it with other hospitals as well. Would that be of interest? And so there we go. So this story works better in outlining um, what we do because we don't mention much of the tech at all. I don't think we even mention machine learning, AI, you know, linear regression, you know, any of the things that I mentioned earlier, none of those tech terms get mentioned. It's truly just all about Paul and his particular problem. And what we found is telling stories like this really, really made a difference and it made people sit up and go, tell us more. So what I want to do is talk you through the structure that I use to tell these kinds of stories. And the uh, structure is not mine. I uh, borrowed it from a man called Joseph Campbell. And Joseph Campbell is a very famous anthropologist, mythologist, and he was interested in why the stories and the, the fairy tales and the folklore of the world's communities, um, some got passed down from, you know, community to community and found their way across other continents and lived on, while other stories just really stayed within this small community or even died out altogether. You know, what was it that enabled some stories to connect at the heart and other stories to not. And what I discovered is that the stories that have a life beyond the continents, you know, that travel, they have a structure, a very specific structure. And that's the structure I want to talk to you today about. Now, this structure is what he called the hero's journey. And it's quite a famous process. And he wrote a book about it called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And that book would have been just of interest to anthropologists, really. Um, if it hadn't fallen into the hands of two very famous men. One was George Lucas and one was Steven Spielberg. And so these two guys got a hold of this and thought, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could tell our film scripts through the, le the lens of this um, storytelling structure? So that's what they did. And as a result of writing scripts using that, that system, they came up with Jaws and E.T. and Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark. So you could say it's been mildly successful for them. Yeah. So... Um, what I want to do is take you through um, how this storytelling structure works and then I'll take you through the story I just told using the prism of the um, 
the Royal Children's Hospital story. So basically the first step is called context. The second one is called challenge. And then there's the third step called action. And then it's result, learnings or lessons, and then suggested actions. And another way of looking at it is called CARLS. So C-C-A-R-L-S, CARLS. So let me take you through context. Context is really important because it sets up the story and it sets up the world that the, the, the players are in or the actors. So for example, the story I gave you, um, I talked about the, the man and I talked about he works at the children's hospital, he's an asset manager, and he's got 30 pumps that he was responsible for, they're the size of an oil drum, uh, the operating theatre's five levels up. So I'm kind of painting the picture and very importantly using numbers, things like the five levels up, 30 um, pumps, um, you know, the Royal Children's Hospital, this, you know, there's just a lot of detail in there that makes people think this is the story of the one versus the story of the many. So the second step was the challenge. And this is critical. You've got to have a challenge in your stories. And this is where life is going along normally, but then things go wrong. You know, so I talked about how everything's fine until the pumps shut down and there's not enough time for the team to get their act together and, and fix it. So that's a critical error or critical situation because it, affects the, the operating theatres five levels up. Um, and the, the real challenge is children's lives are at risk. You know, if the operating theatre shuts down, that's, that's extremely bad news for everybody. So that's really what's at stake here. And then the third step is action. So the action is that um, the pumps shut down and then if, you know, if things go wrong, and then the lesson is that, well, we can't afford to have that happen because it affects the operating theatres and the suggested actions would be to um, maybe have a meeting with us because we can help your pumps um, firstly, you know, predict when they might um, shut down so that your team can get to them more quickly. So we can solve this problem by having a meeting with us. So that's the, the six steps in the storytelling structure. And what I'd be suggesting is that you think about what is the one problem that you, you solve and how can your software um, solve that problem? And talk about the individual cases of situations that you, you know of or use cases so that you can connect your software to a real person, a real situation and tell that story. But just remember about the conflict because it's at that moment that people go, oh, that's where your software can come in handy. So I'm Bernadette Schwert. That's the storytelling structure that I use to tell my pictures and it's worked really well. Um, if you'd like to get in touch, feel free. Uh, look me up on LinkedIn. You know what I do. I've already told you. But if I can be of service to you in any way, please let me know so that the next time you pitch, your stories get you the result that you want. Premium Take care. Thank you.